Hi there people, how you going? Um, I needed to make this video, it's not really a video I want to make, um, but I was lying in bed thinking about everything that's happened over the last few days and I think it's my duty to make it um, in the interests of um, public safety, public well-being, sanity and just doing what's right. I think I need to just do what's right as we all do. So, um, but you know, the videos, I apologize in advance for the state of the video. It's not going to be wonderfully edited. It's not going to be, um, uh, impressive in the way I'm making it or anything like that. I'm just throwing it together, sticking it up. I won't be having comments, um, enabled on the video for a, a very, very good reason is because, um, there's a lot of, um, nuts infiltrating all the videos at the moment on this subject on this subject um, and just spamming basically comments to make everyone look nuts um, you don't need to put a comment here anyway you can comment somewhere else you can um, copy this video I, I strongly advise you or urge you to make a copy of this video uh, keep a copy for yourself somewhere um, and um, yeah, you can comment somewhere else, you can whatever, but you don't need to comment here. Okay, I think it's just in the interest of just keeping it nice and simple. Uh, if you're watching TV, if you're listening to the radio, you don't you don't have a comment section on there, it's just broadcasting information, uh, which is in line with what Max Egan, uh, who I'm going to be talking about, um, always wanted to do. So let's get right into it. Um, I don't know Max Egan personally. I've I know him like everyone else knows him. I know him online. Um, I think the first time I came across him was about five years ago, four years ago, five years ago, when um, I discovered um, and started looking into the abominations in Palestine, um, as you can see behind him there, and that's Max in the picture there. Um, you can see the Palestinian flag in the background. He's been an advocate for the Palestinian people uh, for as long as I've known him online and spoken out against the Israeli government for as long as I've known him. Um, let's get something straight. Like, I'll just put a few little things in here as well, besides the main gist of the uh, video. Um, those of us who criticize Israel are not anti Semitic. We don't hate Jewish people. Um, you can criticize a government and not have anything against the people of that country. That's all it is, and that's all it's ever been. I think four, four or five years ago, uh, maybe 2014, about the big bombing time in Gaza, maybe six years now, um, I came across the truth about what's going on in, in Palestine, how people are being abused on a daily basis, children are ripped out of their beds and blindfolded and taken off for interrogation on a almost pretty daily basis. Um, their water is poisoned, um, settlers shit on their land, kill their, kill their stock. They're just basically tormented every single day and beaten down, beaten down. It's, it's a slow genocide over time. Uh, I've been watching this with horror ever since I first realized what was going on because Israel always kept the, uh, the, the narrative very tightly controlled and no one knew what was going on in there. But since the advent of mobile phones, the internet, which has just come in the last few years, as we all know, we can actually see what's going on over there. Uh, and a lot of us are, are trying to sort of like let everyone know. Um, and I've dedicated pretty much my whole time online in the last few years to just getting the message out. I'm not bashing anyone. I'm not, you know, I love Jewish people just as much as I love anyone else. I love like, growing up and all, all the entertainers that I've known, many of them are Jewish. I love them to bits. Um, I am totally not racist. I'm totally not against anyone on the basis of what group they belong to. It's all, you know, you, 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 if you need to judge anyone, you judge them on their behavior as an individual. You know, that's all you ever do. You don't, you don't grab a whole group of people together and say, well, you're a member of that group, so you're horrible too. I mean, that's illogical and it's evil. And that's why we know racism is wrong. Uh, homophobia is wrong, transphobia is wrong, all of that stuff is all wrong, you know. I mean, I'm gay for fuck's sake. I'm, I'm, I'm Australian, I live in Australia, I'm not Muslim, I'm not Jewish, um, I'm not even Christian. I mean, I mean, I was born 
Church of England, but I'm actually more of a pagan Buddhist Wiccan thing, you know, I'm just a conglomerate of different beliefs that I've picked up over the years. Um, and you find your own truth in life, you know, but I definitely, you know, I'm full of love. I'm a pacifist, um, pretty much the same as I believe Max, Max is, you know. Um, and um, when I see injustice, particularly, particularly against children, like little kids, that four or five year old children terrified out of their wits, 12 year olds dragged off blindfolded and interrogated and forced to sign statements in Hebrew, you know, like um, people's homes being destroyed, you know, I mean, I, I'm not going to go on and on and on about it, but, you know, it's just the injustice, it's, it's, it's the human rights are being abused and have been abused for pretty much 70 years, the whole time that Israel was established. Now, no one, no one, I don't think anyone with a, a, a working brain would, would, um, begrudge Israel a place to call it homeland, but not at the expense of other people's happiness. This is just, this is the injustice of it all. So, um, you know, we're not, we're not anti, anti Semitic. And in fact, the, the people in Israel aren't even Semites. They're, they're Jewish people from, from European descent, uh, Russia and Poland and wherever, you know, I mean, good on them, you know, go, go and live there, but they don't live with their neighbors. They're, they're pushing everyone out. They want all the land for themselves. They want all the gas reserves for themselves. The billions they're making at the moment from the Leviathan gas fields and being a big, huge energy um, con uh, magnate in the area in the Middle East and all of this stuff. It's at the expense of countless innocent lives, you know, and it's going on right in front of us and we can see it happening. And it makes us furious, absolutely furious. So I, I encourage everyone to, to do their research on that. Anyway. Um, but yeah, we don't, we don't hate Jewish people. Um, like anyone that's anti-Semitic and jumps on the whole, uh, anti-Israel bandwagon, that's a different matter. They're, they're just, they're just, they can't see the difference between a government that's behaving badly and criminally behaving, um, and genociding another population, an indigenous population, and wiping them out for its own material financial gain. Um, and, the people themselves, like the, the, like I feel so sorry for the, for the Jewish people that live in Israel. The majority of them have been brainwashed. There's a few nuts there. There's a lot of nuts there, actually. I mean, it's a pretty, pretty much of a basket case of a nation. Uh, the settlers, the, the nut so settlers are, um, like violent and, you know, they've got real mental problems and, you know, like, but, J Jewish people on the whole have got nothing to do with that. You know, it's just like saying, okay, there was an American man who went and shot some children in a school. All Americans are terrorists. That's just, just nuts. You don't say that. You don't, you don't say, um, oh, someone did a crime and they're from, they're from Poland. So all Polish people are, are, are criminals. You don't say, oh, there's this really nasty guy. He's English. And that means all English people are nasty. It, it just doesn't work like that. And we know that. That's why we know, as I said, racism and and um, you know, Islamophobia and all of that stuff. It's just it's just evil and it's wrong because it's it's tarring people with a with a brush they don't deserve. It's criminalising them when they've done nothing. Pardon me, they've done nothing to deserve it. Anyway, so um, yeah, just I just wanted to say that because that's you know, oh, you're anti-Semitic. I've I've never been called anti-Semitic actually in all the years I've been online. Um, bashing, bashing Israel. <laughs> I, I bash the government. I bash the, the, the country itself for, for what it does. But I've never, ever, ever attacked Jewish people as Jewish people. I mean, like, there's nothing wrong with them. They're just people like everyone else. Um, and, um, they're being abused by certain evil influences. Um, I, if you want to get really deep, I believe that the, the evil that attacked the Jewish people in the Holocaust, um, which, you know, the, the Nazis and the Germans and all of that stuff. Um, during the, the Second World War, there was an evil energy that was responsible for that. You know, we all know there's evil and good in the world. There's, there's very tangible evil. It's real. You know, it, it is a real thing. Um, and it's transferred itself somehow into a group of people. Maybe it's the same people. Maybe it's the same people, the same families, and just they're masquerading as Jewish people now. I don't know, because you can become Jewish just by choosing to become Jewish. You don't have to be born Jewish. But 
I really truly believe deep down in my soul that the, the evil energy that was responsible for the Holocaust is transferred into elements within Israel and it's masquerading as being Jewish itself and it's hiding under the the, the protection of like, oh, you know, like we were so persecuted and the Holocaust and all that stuff, you can't say one bad word against us now and we can get away with whatever we like. So, but there is a, a dreadful evil in the world. It's responsible for so much of the wars in Syria and Iraq and Iran and Saudi Arabia and Egypt's getting involved and Turkey's starting to get involved and it's all out of control. It's all because of Israel. Okay, I've made my point about that or I don't want to go on about it, but I met um, I came to see Max online because of my care for the Palestinian human rights. He was exactly on the same page as I was, so I started following him. I watched I didn't watch all of his videos. I watched some of his videos. I followed him on Facebook, I watched him on YouTube. Um and he appeared very often on um news reports, um some of the alternative news channels would have him on as a regular guest, as a commentator on uh, Middle East and Israel and so forth, um, because it's very hard to find someone that will speak out openly in the media about, you know, what Israel does. So I, I, I became quite familiar with Max over time. Okay, so let's fast forward to, um, to the last week or so. I mean, like since, oh, what is it, October? September, October last year, we've had fires here in Australia, terrible fires. And the bushfire season started very, very early. It started, I think, even before summer started. Uh, normally it would be February, like the hottest month of the year here is February. And usually the, the bushfire season goes from about Christmas time, late December, through to sort of like um, February, March, April, not April, really March. That was that was the way it used to be when all the the weather was normal. Um, so it, this started very early and very ferocious. Um, everyone's very very concerned, and you know it's almost like mass panic at the moment in 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 Australia and the rest of the world about you know what is actually going on. There has been um, talk that you know Australia is being uh, intentionally used as an example. I've read online. I've heard online that Australia is being used intentionally it's being burnt on purpose to push the climate change so-called and i use my little fingers as quotation marks agenda um i actually don't have a view on it i know well i do have a view on it i i believe that man, man has fucked up the the environment in massive ways and we can all see that um but i think it's a lot more complicated than people realize uh which is why they don't they're not able to sort of come to sort of an understanding about what to do about it because you know they don't really know what's causing it because a lot of the reasons that it's happening are hidden um which brings us to this video or not this video that you're looking at but um the video i'm making about max he came out um a week ago and came out with a pretty big bombshell about um saying that the weather was being manipulated um Basically, no, before he said about the weather being manipulated, he was saying that the, because there's a massive drought here in Australia, there has been no rain for a long time in certain areas. Other areas, there's normal rain, and but up in New South Wales, uh, lots and lots of rain, uh, lots and lots, of, like no rain, pardon me. Hang on, I have a, give me my tea. <clears throat> and um, he said, um, he, he said basically that the drought was manufactured um, and it was floodplain harvesting, the aquifers were being drained by fracking and by mining and it was um, it was industry and you know like uh, manufacturing and all that sort of thing was was ruining the water supply and I watched what he said and it was actually made a lot of sense. He had um, videos to back it up. It's probably some of it's still on his channel on the Crow House if you want to look at this one, the Crow House here, um, YouTube channel. Um, let me have a look and see if he's... No, actually, I've loaded some comments, so I'll just leave that. Um, but he was explaining how the, the, they, they, they... Because the Murray-Darling River is dried up and all these fish are dying, the, the whole ecosystem is fucked up, 
farmers are having to sell their farms. It's it's like, it's it's a real disaster. It's like a national national emergency going on with water in Australia at the moment, and the climate climate agenda or climate the climate issue um, can use this as a means to say, look, we can prove to you that this is going on. But what Max was saying um, was that um, they're actually diverting the water and stealing the water for for industry and cotton farming and um, um, uh, all sorts of things. So they, 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 they dam it all up. So the water's there, but it's being diverted and it's not going down the rivers anymore, basically. And the huge artesian, ba the Great Artesian Basin, which fills all the creeks from underneath, it's a massive, huge, and he's, he's got all of this in his videos. I'm not going to prove anything here. I'm just, I'm just commentating on what, what he's been saying. Um, you just have to take my word for it and do your own research. And the Great Artesian Basin, uh, he showed maps of that and he said, you know, they've been pulling all of this water out of it and all the creeks around where he lives in Queensland are all dry and they usually get fed by this sort of the aquifers under the ground. So this is all fucked up and he showed all these fracking wells and he said how many there were and they all use X amount of litres of water um, per day or per year or whatever. So he explained in great detail about how the drought was manufactured. Right, so like the water situation and the dryness of the country was created by, basically enabled by government for um, commercial profit. Basically, they they're just turning a blind eye to it and maybe willfully doing it. So, and I don't feel that I'm I'm out of line by saying this. I wrote to Malcolm Turnbull once when he was our prime minister about Israel actually and he wrote back a very nice letter to me and said um, look you know you're perfectly entitled to say in this country whatever you like um, it's, it's free you know, free speech they go on about it in the in the US all the time but you know Australia is also a country where we're considered to be free we consider ourselves free um, even though many people will say that we're controlled and we're not free and it's all an illusion um, I'm not going to go into that, but what I will say is that, you know, Malcolm Turnbull wrote me back a very nice letter or email and said, um, thank you for your, your letter, you know, basically this is the government's, yeah, they usually give a stock reply on what the government's position is and some pull it out of a book or something. And then, you know, he said, you know, we appreciate, you know, I appreciate, you know, you've got the right to say this in, in our country and that's what makes our country so great, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, I can say, I can say this, there's nothing wrong with saying it. I don't live in communist China yet. Um, so um, he was going on about that. He was saying about that the the, uh, the water the water situation was manufactured and it was caused on purpose. Then the fires got really bad um, down in Victoria and in New South Wales on the border between the two and around there in Gippsland and, and whatnot. And then he started saying that. Um, the weather was being manipulated, and he provided um, some evidence of this <coughs> by showing that it was possible to manipulate the weather. And I'm going to show you a video <coughs> soon that um, he actually played that is he pulled down off YouTube. Many people have copied it. He said to people, "Download it, make copies of you for yourself." Many of it, many people did. I was one of them. I, you know, I don't like having things taken off and censored off the internet because someone doesn't want you to know something. That's a, a trick Israel uses all the time. They'll just they'll just they'll discredit something or, or remove it or whatever. They won't let free speech happen. So and exchange of of open ideas and stuff like that. And you know, um, so I made a copy too, and I'm going to play you that that video shortly in its entirety i won't just play excerpts i'll just play the whole thing um so he was he was saying basically that he learned that the chem like there's this thing about chemtrails um that um people are waking up to it's been the government tries to discredit the government all around the world tries to discredit it uh, and if i just want to quickly insert here that my belief on the government is that in the Western democracies, um, pretty much they're all, it's my, I'm, I'm convinced of this, right? Is that everyone, every government, like England, Canada, America, Australia, New Zealand, 
mostly, I guess. They're a little bit more independent, but you know, Europe, all the, all the Western countries, they, they all are democracies apparently, but they're all basically controlled by the same people. You know, they, they call it the new world order, the global elite, all that sort of thing. Basically, there's a small group of people all pulling the strings and the governments are just installed. Both sides of government are basically all on the same side. So it gives the illusion of change. It gives the illusion that people have control. But if you want to see that you've got no control, it's easy to see because who wants to go to war? No one wants to go to war. We hate war. We're sick of war. We don't like war. But you watch. Every country will send their troops off to war and we have no say over it at all. And it doesn't matter what side of government is in. You know, in the America, they've got the Republicans and the Democrats. That's pretty much it. They've got two sides and they're all pretty much in the same big boys club. In Australia, we've got Liberal, which is the conservative side, like the Republicans. We've got Labor, which is more like the Democrats. They're the same. You know, they pretend to be opposition to each other, but they're actually pretty much all identical, you know. Same in England, you know, you've got the Conservatives, they've got the Tories, and you've got Labor over there. You've got Jeremy Corbyn, who's trying to make a difference. Uh, he's been smeared to the shit because he, he said out loud he will prevent um, funds going to Israel and, um, you know, put it, you know, hold them to account for their, for their um, behavior. And I, I'm telling you, everyone, Israel is at the center of so much of the world's problems. If we can control them, if we can make them accountable for their actions and make them come into line because they're a rogue state, they don't follow any international rules, they, they kill people, they torture people, they steal land, they do whatever they like, they are out of fucking control. Out of fucking control. But they've got the big US standing behind them because all the evangelists in the US who are waiting for their big rapture at the end of the end times, their religious beliefs, which are even more kooky than the Islam, the, the hardcore Islam, Islamists on the, you know, on the other camp. It's the evangelists that know that until the Jewish people all go back to Israel, like it says in the Bible, in their book, that, um, that they're, um, they're not going to go to heaven. So they, they've got a vested interest in seeing Israel succeed. And they don't care if all the people, I think they even think that they're going to all get killed. All the Jewish people are going to get killed at the end times or something. They don't even care about the Jewish people. They, for their own vested interests, they want such and such to happen in Israel. And they don't care about the Palestinian people who already live there. It's Palestine. Do you think that, that Jerusalem, which is one of the hugest, most historical cities in the whole world, didn't have an area around it as a capital city? You think it just was no, no inhabitants around it. It was just a massive city with no one around. The fact they were all farmers and it was all agriculture, Israel can say, well, they're all stupid people. Anyway, I digress. Anyway, so I believe that basically all the, 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 all the democracies in the Western world are all pretty much controlled by the same agenda and the same people. I've believed that for quite a few years. It's quite obvious. Um, and, like, anyway, this is what Max was saying. Um, he said that, and, oh yeah, and so like the chemtrails um, is one thing that governments will try and say, oh, that's, that's, that's all conspiracy theories, that's rubbish. And they'll try and discredit those people and make them look nutty so no one listens to them. And people turn off and go, oh, I don't need to know about that. And that's just all rubbish. They're just, they're just nutsos. Like the vaccine um, skeptics where the truth of the matter is usually somewhere in the middle. It's not like all vaccines are bad, all vaccines are good. It's that vaccines are being abused. Some of them work, some of them don't. Um, it's, not, it's, it, it's, not, it's not black and white like that, you know, and kids are being um, um, affected badly and, and killed in some cases by vaccines. And a lot of the times the vaccines make people sicker, they don't work. But in other cases, vaccines do work. I mean, they need to do a proper sort of like analysis of it, an open, honest look at that stuff. And the same with chemtrails, you know, it's like it, it's not one thing or the other. But um, anyway, so he showed he showed the, um, you know, all we care about is the health of the kids. We care about the health of the planet and people on all sides of the vaccine debate, for instance, they care about children. They, they don't want kids to be sick. They don't want kids to die. The people that are anti-vaccination, want they they can they they've done they're actually a lot of research on it i've done a lot of research on it i'm not totally anti-vaccination i'm mostly 
sceptical about how effective they are. And I think more, more, more research needs to be done. But they say, oh, the science has been settled. Um, there's nothing more we can learn, which is not how science works. They're always learning something new. If they'd said that in the 1940s, we wouldn't have all the things we've got now. Do you know what I mean? Technology and computers and everything. We say, oh, we know everything there is to know. We can't learn anymore. So that's, that's illogical. And we're being fed illogical things all the time um, by those with vested interests. And it's usually to do with money. It's usually to do with um, corporate greed, you know, the corporations and businesses and stuff like that. And, the, and the, the governments want their income. They want to keep in power. They want their cushy lives and they get their donations, and it's all about money, you know, it's all about power, money, whatever, and we're the poor bozos that have to sit there and, and live through it all, you know what I mean? Where basically everyone in the world wants to live their lives, doesn't matter whether they're in Iran, Australia, England, America, Europe, the Congo, it doesn't matter, we get up, we want to have a happy life, we want to have something in our, in our stomach, we want a roof over our heads, we want our loved ones to be safe, we want to go and be productive during the day, we want to make a difference in the world hopefully, we want to protect our loved ones and we want to go to bed and feel safe and wake up and do it all again the next day. And everybody's the same, everybody's the fucking same. We're all different, but we're all essentially the same, we all want the same things. But they like to divide us and say these people are all evil. And if you believe everyone in Iran is evil, you're stupid. Everyone in, in, it's racist. You can't say everybody, like I said before, all Jewish people aren't a certain way. All, all people from any country or any religion aren't a certain way. It's completely rude and insulting to everybody in that group to tar them all with one brush because you don't like someone that you met once or, or some people that you've come across from that group and you say, oh, they're all like that. That's, that's rubbish, you know? So, um, you know, we're all trying to get by, we're all trying to live our lives. So getting back to Max, sorry, a bit sidetracked here, getting, there's so much going on, isn't there, you know? So getting back to Max, he, he, he um, was talking about chemtrails and the governments will try and, and, um, and discredit people that talk about chemtrails. They have done for years. At first they said that it didn't happen, it was just um, contrails, you know, it's just like steam that comes out of the back of a, a jet and everyone's going, that's impossible. And they're showing photos, they're showing satellite imagery of all these crisscross lines, which which would not exist because that sort of condensation that they say it is would only be on certain climactic days where the weather's a certain way. <clears throat> Pardon me, not all the time. So anyway, you know, the people that, that have been trying to wake people up into the fact that these, something is being sprayed in our air uh, for years now, they've been trying to alert the public to it, have been made up to be whack jobs, conspiracy nuts, wearing tinfoil hats, all that stuff, right? Anyway, so, and like personally, I think, well, you know, like, are they? I don't know. I don't, I haven't got an opinion on it, to be honest. It's like, are they? I mean, like, if they are, I don't want them to, but, um, you know, maybe they're not, you know, I'm not, I'm not on any, I'm not, I'm not a fundamentalist in any way, shape or form. I've just got an open mind on, on pretty much everything. Um, life is fluid, nothing's, you know, one truth is true for one person and something else is true for someone else, those truths are not the same, do you know what I mean? It's like, often, it's your perspective on life, how you see things, what, you know, what it is for you, that's your truth, and that is true, it's true for you, but, you know, what's true for someone else is their truth, you know, and we've just got to accept that, we've got to be more accepting and more respectful of everybody else's truth, what they're going through, realise what we've got in common, and also realize, you know, like my situation is not your situation. Your situation isn't mine. Okay. So, but anyway, these, these people are trying to uh, alert the, the public to these chemtrails and they're labeled nuts and stuff. Right. So, um, Max put out a video, um, about what they were spraying. And he said in this video, and this is where my ears pricked up the most. He said that basically he'd done all this research and people, helping him had done research for him and helped him out and he'd come across the information that what they were spraying up in the air to control the global warming was like aluminium and stuff like that to so-called like apparently reflect back into the sun back to itself and stuff like this about me um and um he, he came up with some evidence that 
what was being sprayed in the air for whatever these whatever reasons they're doing these spraying these chemtrails in Australia, where they're doing them everywhere, you know, was um, aluminium oxide, strontium, and I think the other one was not barium. It was started with a B. You can you can maybe look at his video. It's still there. Um, these three three elements were there for. Um, were actually proven to be what they what they spray from these planes, okay, for weather modification or whatever they're doing up there. We don't know. They won't tell us, so we don't know what they're doing. We can't prove that, but we know that they're spraying something up there, okay? So he also then linked it, and he said, also, when they make sparklers, and he showed it on his video, when they make little um, New Year's Eve sparklers, you know, like fireworks, they're like those sticks, and you light them with a the lighter, and all these sparks come out and then they, they burn really hot and bright and all these sparks shoot out. Everybody knows them and you wave them around and they're pretty safe. Even kids can wave them around and then they go out and you've got this sort of burnt out, sad looking piece of wire with stuff on it, right? Throw it away, but not till it's, not till it's cooled down. I haven't used one for years, but you know, we all know what they are. Well, it turns out that the, 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 the stuff that they make those with has the same stuff aluminium oxide strontium it needs um something to um burn it needs um basically things that i mean he explained it i can't think off the top of my head exactly how it works but um there were certain elements that you needed to make this this thing burn um and it was exactly the same chemicals that they're spraying right so it doesn't take much to put two and two together and, and actually come up with an actual four and realize that if they're spraying that in the air and it's coming down into the ground and then leaching into everything it will become flammable it's exactly the same composition chemically so exactly the same result by physics will happen so um he he was saying that you know basically they're spraying 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 all this stuff particularly over new south wales and southern new south wales and um, that it's leached into the ground. He also showed a video where someone had um, the aluminium oxide and they, they made it very wet, then they dried it out again, and then it was still flammable. And, he, and they said in the video, the only way to get rid of this is to burn it. And it was extremely flammable. It was very bright, very colored flames. And Max was saying, basically, it's, it's all leached into the ground over a long period of time. And into the you know the leaves and the soil and the trees and it's basically coated everything, and so this is why these fires have been so intense. It's actually a man-made issue. It's not climate change per se. It's it's something men have done or man has done to the environment and fucked it up. Now in Australia we have a very big um, history of that. Like it was a it's a totally um, self-contained continent we have very very good borders and we've controlled things with um, diseases we've prevented them from coming in that's why a lot of our food is considered to be so good and china wants our milk and all that stuff is because we have control over our borders uh, unlike other countries which have other countries neighboring them and things can get in and out without anyone knowing pretty much nothing can come to australia without them knowing about it right um, although in you know containers and shipping ports and stuff like that things come in that people don't know about i'm not saying it's completely safe but you know on the whole um you know if a disease breaks out they can contain it and over the years they've, they've had very very uh, huge control over what happens here okay but they've also fucked up a lot you know like there's been um uh encephalitis was a, a disease they decided they wanted to control because they introduced the history of this country, Australia, is they introduced things to try and fix something else. So they introduced, when the settlers came here, they brought everything from England um, that they to make themselves feel like it was a little bit of home. So they brought foxes, they brought rabbits, they brought um, cows, they brought everything to make them feel like it was a little bit of home because it's so far away. They wanted to make a tiny bit of England here. So they... Then they had foxes, then they had rabbits, and the foxes kept the rabbits in check. And then the foxes were a problem because of hens and farms, and they got rid of the foxes, then the rabbits got out of control. The same things happened with the cane toads. They had an insect uh, infestation in the sugar cane up in Queensland many, many, many years ago. 
uh, I don't even know when it was, the 40s, 50s, 60s, I don't know. And they introduced this toad from overseas that only ate this particular insect. Well, it ate the insect and then it just went out of control. And now they have this huge infestation of cane toads. I mean, they're, they're going from Queensland all the way across to, to Darwin, I think they reach uh, these days. And they are a massive problem. And that is because humans don't know what the fuck they're doing. And we see this in this country, Australia, all the time. They bring something in thinking, oh, we know what we're doing. They just introduced herpes virus into river systems to, to um, control the carp, the carp population a few years ago. Or they're trying to, or something like that. It's just ridiculous. They never learn from their mistakes. So the cane toads went out of control. And then they brought in, um, when the rabbits were out of control in the 70s, um, I, I was around then, and I remember seeing a rabbit in our in our like I used to live in the country. Um, I saw a rabbit come into our backyard, and it was it used to make their eyes bulge out. They gave them this virus, basically uh, spread by mosquitoes, called encephal uh, not encephalitis, myxomatosis. Sorry, it's called myxomatosis. Um, encephalitis was a breakout in another time. It was brain thing that kids got from mosquitoes as well. But no, sorry, my mistake. Myxomatosis. They introduced this from overseas into the rabbit population via mosquitoes, and the mosquitoes got um, bit 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 the rabbits, and then the rabbits their eyes bulged out, they went blind, they couldn't see. It was the most horrible, hideous death you could ever wish on any living creature. Um, we saw one come into our um, into our, our yard once, and it was the most distressing thing I think we've ever seen. My mum and I. She she had to put it. She got a big cardboard box and put it over the top of it to give it some some um, safety because it couldn't see. It was just running into fences and running into walls and running into uh, anything. It just like panicked, but it couldn't see. It went blind. It was banging into stuff and and it was trying to get away. It didn't know where it was. So mum put a big cardboard box upside down over it and let it die in peace. She didn't know what to do with it. Um, that was a huge. A huge introduced disease that the Australian government brought in, um, and the same thing with the cane toads. Uh, now they're doing it with the herpes virus. Um, so they've got a history in this in this country of thinking that they they can introduce something to control something else, and that it'll all be fine, and then it all fucks up, and they all blame the previous government, and it's just like they really should learn just to leave leave nature alone. Nature knows what it's doing. Nature has known what it's been doing for billions of years. And the environment that we've got is a very fragile system of feedback system, which one thing affects something else. You know, have you heard of the butterfly effect where, you know, a butterfly waves its wings and it causes a hurricane somewhere else? It, I don't know if that's actually the way it works, but it is sort of essentially what goes on. You know, one thing, we, we've got one sky all around the world don't care what shape the world is. We'll come to that in a minute. I personally don't give a shit if it's round or flat or whatever, but I live on it. That's my home. That's all I care about, right? But what happens, in, what we do know is that what happens in one place will affect something else because it's all air. There's no borders in the sky. There's no borders in the air. There's no borders, you know, where the wind goes and the clouds go. It's everybody's. It belongs to everyone. And yet you'll have a country that will be controlling weather in one place for their own ends. That'll affect and have a knock-on effect on other other places further. It's the same with the river system. If you block it up in one area, it's great for that area. Further down the river, they've all got no water. So you have to be very careful when you're dealing with the environment on what you do because it affects everything else. So, um, but I'm just I'm just saying all that about Australia and the introduced pests and all that stuff just to say that we do have a, a track record of thinking wrongly that we can control nature and and make it all better right anyway so max showed these these um chemtrails explained what was in them that it was basically sparkler dust and it was setting the place on fire and then he had um had interviews with people going oh well you know we've been seeing self-actuating fireballs going off i've never seen anything like it the flames are like higher than they've ever been and it all made sense. It all made sense about um, the fact that this stuff had been sprayed on the on the land, and it, for whatever other reason, and they were so stupid they didn't realise that it was making everything flammable. And it just went into the ground and just sat there. And it, the only thing that was going to change it was burning it away. 
right? So when we had a normal fire season, all of a sudden it just went nuts. And this is what we're seeing as a result. So um, Max explained about um, about the sparkler dust. Um, so I was I was sharing that, you know, I was like, you know, people need to know this. Uh, then the fires got even worse. Uh, it was all in a, the space of a very short period of time. The the Kangaroo Island fires were happening, and thousands and thousands and thousands of koalas were killed. Um, when they say it's like a billion animals have died, they're not exaggerating. Um, some some ecologists have worked this out by averaging out the known populations of various animals and life forms in pardon me in areas of Australia and then multiplying it out by other areas. When they talk about animals, you've got to remember, they're not just talking about possums and koalas and mammals and marsupials and birds. They're also talking about lizards, insects, the whole ecosystem. You know, when they're talking about a billion animals, it sounds like it's an uh, overreach. But it's actually true. It's actually, um, you know, you think about every little skink, every little lizard, um, sumpy tails, goannas, um, snakes, spiders, Beetles, moths, flies. You know, I don't know about flies, but you know, you know what I'm saying. It's like everything that has died is in the bill. You know, over a billion lives have been lost, and they're all lives. They're all they're all sentient little beings that live in their lives. Just because we can't understand them and we don't understand what they're saying and they we can't hear what they're saying doesn't mean that they're not smart. Doesn't mean that they don't have their own their own their own lives and their own brains and their own reality. We don't know. So we can't say, all right, we can't say that humans are so much smarter. In fact, I believe that every other animal can talk to each other and they can all understand each other. I've seen a dog talking to a fly. I've seen a spider talking to a cat. I've seen, I've seen them all talking to each other and, and the cats talking to each other and dogs talking to each other. They, they, they all understand each other perfectly. It's only humans that don't understand what they're saying. So we think, oh, they're all dumb. And it's like humans are dumb. <laughs> Hello. Anyway, so he, he went on about this this sparkler dust and how it was blowing the world up and stuff, and um, it got a lot of attention. And his his channel received, I think, twenty thousand more uh, subscribers. Um, his usual video um, view count was usually about forty, fifty, sixty thousand per video over time. And in the space of only a week or so, he was getting like nearly 300,000 views on some videos. So he got a lot of attention. Um, and he was, he was already known, as I said, through his work for supporting Palestine, Palestinian human rights, and criticizing Israel and against the New World Order and all that type of thing. Agenda 21, I don't even know fully what that is all about. I know the basics of it, but I don't know the details and I don't care to. Um, but he was already well known, but he picked up a lot of viewers from this and got a lot of attention. Anyway, so um, the other day he came up with this video, which is here. It's called The Truth, whether you like it or not, right? January the 16th, you can see down here on my screen, it's 3.39, 17th of the 1st, 2020. We're in Australia. Um, so... Um, Overseas in America, in the UK, whatever, it's yesterday, it's still 16th. All right, <clears throat> so it's still very recent. This, this uh, video in this video, he suddenly said the earth was flat. He said, um, he had a revelation about the meaning of life. He said, he, he got. A downloaded this white light came to him and download now he's had a lot of acid in the past and I suspected initially it was just a flashback of some kind because that apparently can be quite um, believable when when you go through them no, I've never had a flashback I've taken acid years and years and years ago I've never had a flashback but um, you know it sounded to me like something like some some sort of psychotic break or something anyway so he said he was lying there and this this but you know like who are we to doubt him? You know, maybe he's telling, you know, he's, he's telling his truth, you know. <clears throat> so he, he said he lay there and he got this download of all this information and it was like five days he disappeared. So he went from being extremely um, viewed and very, very public and, and he was getting mad. He was screaming and he was saying the government, I'm coming for the government. You're all assholes. He said the C word actually. 
um, I think so. And he said, we're going to get you and um, Morrison, you're fucked. And he's the prime minister of this country. He's a terrible prime minister. Um, corrupt as fuck, in my opinion. Um, uh, what I think and how I feel, <laughs> as one of my favorite YouTubers says. She says, you know, this is what I think and what I feel. You know, it's just an opinion video. You know, uh, we're all allowed to have one. Um, so he was he was very very angry he, he got extremely irate <clears throat> he, he said um he was you know we're all coming for you we're going to get guns out and it was like really really uh full-on um stuff that he was saying and it obviously alarmed the authorities um because he disappeared for five days and then he came back with this video and he said uh, he was very, very calm, very docile, not his usual self. Um, he said, oh, the world's flat. Um, uh, Max Egan isn't my real name. He held up his hand at one stage. It's got a swastika drawn on it with lo what looks like pen or texture because uh, it wouldn't be a, a, t a tattoo. It's just drawn on, you know, um, from what you can see. And um, in his glasses, you can see reflections which sort of look like there's someone in the room behind the camera moving around. Um, and he says down here, someone has addressed it. Um, you can you can pause this if you like and read what he said nine hours ago, or 10, 11 hours ago. I've had this loaded for an hour or two. Um, so you can read that if you want to, just pause it. And then all these replies, um, they're saying, who's giving you a hand gesture at 3247. Now, if you look at this, you can see, you watch this. All right, I'll just. But you will. Um, but. I see that? You will. And, and the books actually showed if you could support me through. Let's look at his left, gl left a, glass a, lens on the left. B, um, but hey, folks, it was the truth. Yeah. And the truth is, the earth is flat. So. There's someone there, look. Is there someone moving around? Or you will. Um, but. See the hand go? And, and so. What's actually people have been noticing that <clears throat> in his glasses here on the left, you, at various points in the, in the video, Another another point, you can see someone that looks like they're tiptoeing around, like someone on a movie set. I used to do extra work on movie sets, and when you do, you don't want to make um, a noise when they're filming, even on a TV set, whatever set. When someone's filming, you don't want to make a noise. So if there's someone else there, you creep around, you try not to knock anything. You don't want to make any noise. You don't because it'll be picked up by the microphone. And in his eyeglass on the left. You see someone looking like they're sort of in exactly the same way that you would tiptoe around a movie set. It looks like they're sort of slightly bent over, got their arm out a bit. They just sort of move, move around, like move somewhere. And he's saying in his um, comments here, and he says down here, who's giving you a hand gesture at 3247? If you come down here, I'll just roll this down and stop it, and you can pause it and read all the comments if you want to. Okay. But down further, you can just pause these and read them if you want to. I expanded them all before. Here, he says, it's a reflection on my glasses from the screen, not a hand gesture from someone. In re response to uh, this person. Right. <clears throat> That's not actually... No, people are... People are people, okay, let me just say get it together um he's been saying that the, the the earth is flat he had all these revelations that the earth is um like he understands now what everything's about it's a game but it's all virtual reality it's like the truman show he he found out that we're going to another realm soon and just basically made himself sound whack out like a whack whack job right now i believe a lot of these things myself in you know different realities different dimensions i have a very very open mind at the end of the day 
a lot of things don't matter. A lot of things don't matter because like um, I live in my life. That's all I know. That's what I care about. I care about my environment. I care about my politics in my country. I care about the, the human rights of those that I know are being abused. But, you know, when, when other things are concerned, like the shape of the earth, is it flat? Is it round? I mean, does it really matter to me? No. You know, like it could be round. It could be square. It could be oblong. It could be lots of land. Like some people say it's flat and there's loads of land past the poles that the government doesn't want you to know about and all these, all these, all these um, theories like that. At the end of the day, to me, I don't give a shit. I don't care if it's round. I don't care if it's flat. It's my home. I live here. I stand on it. There's plants outside. I do my bit in my little part to make my garden nice, to look after insects, to look after animals, to, to make the world better. I do my part online to try and make the world a little bit better than it was when I found it, you know? And I did that when I worked in customer service and entertainment and all that stuff. Um, I always tried to make the world a little bit better than when I, before I was there, right? That's what matters. That's what we, we all should be doing. We should be like focusing on what matters, right? So it's nice to think about these theories, but at the end of the day, I personally, you can get all obsessed over it and say it's definitely flat, it's definitely round. I don't care. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. Um, so, um, you know, it's nice to think about and maybe it is, and I go, oh, wow, I didn't know that. Uh, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really, really matter in my life whether the earth is round or flat. He's saying it's flat. Now, suddenly, everybody's coming out, all these kooks are coming out and saying, oh, you know, he's a flat earther, and, you know, like he's welcoming to our family. He's got a swastika on his hand. Um, he's saying that he's the, almost like the chosen one or maybe the chosen one in this game, and it's all virtual reality. Another commentator, like this guy that's a commentator that I watched a video yesterday, which he's since removed, I don't know if he was made to remove it or not, um, was suggesting that it doesn't make any sense that he's worked for years and years um, on his, um, on his, um, his um, trying to get the, the truth out, just to do a big shit on it now, because no one's going to take him seriously ever again. You know, they're going to say this is a Nazi, Jew-hating, um, climate climate denier. Um, he's, uh, he's, he's a nut. He thinks we're all in virtual reality. He thinks the earth is flat. You put those things together, people will just go automatically, like they do with the chemtrails, you know, they just go, oh, they're nuts. Tin foil hat wearers, don't take any notice. Don't have to worry about that now. You know, we can discount that. And that's what that's what the authorities want. They want people to ignore him. And he got a lot of attention, and now they're ignoring him, right? So, so um, um, I've lost my little um thing on the screen. Um, so they're, they're just making him basically. Um, I just freaked out for a minute. Thought it stopped recording. Um, they're basically saying that you know, trying to make him look like a nut. Everybody's saying, look, he's just um, he's being made to say this. He's being held at gunpoint. Um, the they've knocked on his door and, and made him made him say this stuff, that he's, he's saying it under duress. So, because um, I was looking down to see what the time was and see how long I've gone. I think I've gone for about 40 minutes or something, 45 minutes. I think I should stop um, because I, I still need to play this video that I want to play. So, um, you know, now that the situation is he's been totally discredited in the eyes of the public. Um, this this um, commentator who has taken his video down made a lot of good points. He said that basically um, the Flat Earth movement um, is run by NASA and um, they also, they basically have people on both sides of the fence. They say the Earth's flat and then they'll come on as bot accounts, say no, the Earth's round and they want to pit people against each other, divide and conquer. We all know that's the way to to control people, divide them, make them fight, keep them busy while we're doing something else somewhere else, you know, something else somewhere else. So um, his, now Max is labelled a nut. No one's going to take any notice of him. Um, and he's like, I've known him for five years. I saw someone post something on one of his videos. I can't find it and I forgot to load it. Um, when, because he's saying it's not his real name as well. He's saying, oh, 
I'll tell you my name in the next video. Um, and, you know, it will be revealed. And it's like, why don't you tell us your name now? And it's also designed to make him look a bit fake, like he's just not who he seems he is. It's it's just, it's, everybody's going, this doesn't make sense. This isn't right. We're all using our brains. Um, he's taught everyone to use their brains and think outside the box, you know. He's, he's very, been very prolific over a long time. Someone showed a... Um, uh, a, a, a link and I clicked on the link and it went to his um, his profile that he wrote in 2007 saying who am I uh, my name's Max Egan but it's not my real name I'm not going to turn my real name but it's taken from blah 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 and my you know my, my son and my uncle and whatever so they were saying you know it's no secret that it's not his real name he's been using this alias pen name as he called it um, for since 2007 so that's you know, a long time now so I don't know how long he's been around. I'm, I'm saying probably since 2007, um, <clears throat> judging by the date of that profile being written um, and him saying that, you know, it wasn't his real name. Um, but he's put in all regular work. So what's that? Seven, eight, nine, 10, 13 years he's been around working constantly trying to get people to see, to see the truth and to um, wake up to, you know, how they're being controlled and herded around like sheep, all right? So, and, you know, the, the injustices in Palestine, and you know, that's where we met. As I said, we're all on the same page as far as, you know, what's causing a lot of the world's problems and stuff like that. So, you know, he was a very, very um, respected voice in, in the um, community where it came to sort of like pointing out, you know, calling it out for what it is, and lifting the veil on a lot of the secrets that the governments and authorities will try and, 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 and hold over the public because they think they know better and the public's stupid or whatever and that they're, you know, they're in control. So, you know, he's gone from, from being this really intelligent, respected person and suddenly going, he's got a swastika on his hand, he's saying he's the chosen one, he's saying that you know, like he had this revelation and a download and it's all a game, it's not real. Uh, and the, the earth's flat and everybody is sort of saying, and well, not everybody, but like many people are saying, many people are saying, and I agree with them that it just does not make any sense. And it's only there to discredit him. And this commentator was saying the same thing. He's saying, why at this time, even if you realize this and had this revelation um, about um, the, the meaning of life, <laughs> why would he all of a sudden just drop what was so important about the fires when he was so passionate about the fires and his, and his lands burning and his homelands burning and all this stuff. He would just put that on the back burner, so to speak, no pun intended, but he put that, you know, put that on the back burner for a while and just continue because he, he suddenly got like hundreds of thousands of views and he was the biggest story in the world about the Australian wildfires and bushfires and stuff. Um, why would he just abandon that now and, and, and say, Oh, the earth's flat and make himself look like a, an idiot. And he's just basically like this guy said, he's taken a big steaming dump on his work and no one is ever going to take him seriously again. Why would he do that? Why would he do that? Well, it's obvious it's because he was saying stuff that you know, the authorities or those in those, the powers that be, it might not even be the government. It might be just the people behind the government don't want him to know. I don't want everyone, anyone to know. Um, and it could also be Israel because he's been very vocal against Israel for a very, very long time. And maybe they thought until there's a threshold where he becomes more, more popular or more famous, we won't worry about him because no one's going to pay any attention. Suddenly he was getting all this attention with the Australian fires. Maybe it's got nothing to do with that. Maybe it's all to do with the fact that he's also anti, anti um, Israel and he's like pro Palestinian. And Israel was like, oh, we've got to discredit this guy. We've got to take this guy out. That's very Mossad type, you know, PSYOP type stuff, isn't it? You know, it's like convince the, convince the public of whatever. So anyway, that's it. That's it basically all, all, all up. <clears throat> He's come out and, and sort of discredited himself with this ridiculous story about you know, the earth being flat. And as I said, I don't care if it's flat. I don't care if it's round. And that's why I'm not having any... Um, comments turned on for this video because it will just be inundated with flat earth people. I know this video is going to get a lot of attention. So, and I, again, encourage you to copy it, keep it for yourself because this will probably get taken down. Probably I'll get contacted like everyone else has got contacted. The, um, 
the commentator that I'm not going to name, but the commentator on this YouTube channel that I was listening to yesterday, um, I had a video, very long video, very, very good video, uh, which I didn't actually watch all of it. It was so long, I had to go to bed and I left it on, left it paused where I was, where I was up to, came back today, got up and went to play it and it was taken down by the user. So um, I'm imagining, and like Max has taken down several of his videos as well, um, um, of the, the ones, basically the last few that he took down, I watched all of them, they were all the same thing. So basically these clips, which I'm going to show you in the video that I copied, it's it's the same thing um, he had again and again and again, make viral, make viral, make viral, make this viral. He had about three, I think, of them, three, I think it wasn't four, I think it was three videos. Um, anyway, so um, this video that I'm making will likely get taken down, so I do encourage everyone to make their own copy. Um, one of the best programs is um, this one, 4K Video Downloader. If you search that on Google, 4K Video Downloader, um, it is a really, really, really good program. I mean, I think it, there is a free version of it, I think you can, which has a limit on it, but you can pay something like ridiculously small, like 20 bucks or something like that, and buy it, and then you can, you can just um, download. I think that's right. Maybe I'm thinking of something else. Anyway, download the video, keep your own copy of it, um, and keep keep doing what I'm trying to do is continue what Max has had taken away from him. That's why I'm making this video. I don't care about fame. I don't care about power. I don't care about money. I'll never monetize anything. He never monetized anything. Anyway, I I, I just think that we we're all lambs to the slaughter at the moment. I mean, he was saying, basically, they're trying to ruin the food production of the country because they want to take militarily over the country. He was saying really big shit. He was saying that, you know, Australia's being, going to be invaded by, by soldiers and militarised when everyone panics because there's no food and stuff like that. And it's basically the beginning of the end. That's what he was saying. Well, as far as I'm concerned, it's like if I was in Nazi Germany in, in the 40s, and saw the Jews being treated like that, I would have spoken out then. That's why I see the Palestinians being treated like they are, and I'm speaking out today. That's why I'm seeing Max being shut up. Effectively, it looks like, to everyone with a brain, it looks like he's done a complete 180. It doesn't make any sense. It's completely illogical. He's been shut up now. Do you know what I mean? So we have to keep saying it. You can't stop all of us. It's like that anonymous movement. It's like... You can't stop everyone. Everybody has to just keep speaking the truth, keep putting it out there, keep sharing it, put the videos up, keep sharing them, keep it up. You know, one one gets taken down, ten more will come up. What's that mythical creature? It gets one head cut off and ten grow back? Can't remember. A hydra. That's right, hydra. Well, let's be like a hydra, okay? So, you know, I'm and like I will say for the record here, I'm a pacifist. I'm anti-violence. I do not believe in wars. I do not believe, I'm not a racist. I'm, I, I love everybody. I love insects. I love people. I love animals. I, well, I love people more. I love animals more than people, but uh, I, lo I love everybody, you know. Um, I don't have a problem with anyone, right? Um, I have a very strong sense of, of responsibility to do the right thing. Now, when I've seen Max get shut up like this, I think, okay, it's my responsibility now to put out his video and tell everybody what's happening so people continue to know what's going on and that his work continues. So he might have been shut up, but they can't shut all of us up, okay? All right, so I've made all my point. You know what the, the situation with poor old Max here is? He's made, being made out to be a loopy la la. And... Um, Maybe he has gone loopy la la. Maybe he's had a psychotic break. I mean, a lot of a lot of stress. Maybe maybe it is a flashback. We don't know. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it's like is the world flat or round? It doesn't matter. What matters is you know what what we do know. So, um, and that's pretty much what he was saying. He was going about directed energy weapons and stuff, and he's saying to people, don't spread that shit around. And it's like we we don't know what we don't know. We can't prove that, but what we can prove, tell everyone that. All right. 
So uh, otherwise it makes us look like nuts. He actually said that in a recent video. He said, you know, we're going to be just discredited. And now he's come out and done this and discredited himself in the most heinous of ways. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. And we all can see that. So please um, spare a good thought for Max. I'll just finish up now before I play the video. Spare a good thought for Max. Send him some love because I think he's in maybe danger or something like that. I might even get a knock on the door. I don't know what's going to go on, but I'll be very interested to see who the fuck's behind this, and that's maybe one way of finding out, isn't it? So, anyway, um, this is his video, The Truth Whether You Like It or Not. Um, all the all the comments, I won't I won't show all the comments. You can go to have a look at them yourself. It might get taken down. Get down, please. Sorry. Um um the, all these videos um uh, sorry all these comments and um it, like it's full of flat earth people saying like this one person here um i don't want to waste any more time but like you, know, you can look at the you can look at them yourself anyway so i'm going to play this video that he played that he had taken down all right so it's here um i have my sound turned down so i won't feedback through the microphone that I'm using. So I can't actually hear it. Um, I'll just sit down and watch it. It's um, 29 minutes long. Uh, enjoy the video. I won't say anything at the end of the video. Just bear in mind that this is the video he put out. Um, I don't condone violence. I don't condone guns. So I'm not condoning the fact of uh, what he says at the beginning about we're coming for you with guns and stuff like that. I, I do not condone that. But in the interest of of um, spreading awareness and you know keeping his because um, he's very upset about the animals and everything but dying you can see that he's he's incredibly angry so we've got to we've got to make an allowance for that further on in the video it does start repeating itself over and over a little bit so um, but I encourage you to watch the whole half hour of it and it explains about. Um, the weather manipulation and proves that it's actually real and stuff, which is what he wanted everyone to know. He wanted to know people, he wanted everyone to know, basically, in a nutshell, that they have been spraying something in the air which has made the fires worse. It's a man-made problem. The drought is a man-made problem because they've been banking up all the water. The water's there. The, the rain's not coming because they're, they're pushing it around um, and, and creating a drought on purpose. They want to basically... Um, move people out of the country so that they can actually, um, um, what did he say? Move people out of the country so that they can, they can mine it. And, and, you know, you look and you see a national park, but you know, like, um, just past the national park and, and a kilometer into the park, it's all, it's all mining, but no one can see that because they're not allowed to go there anymore. You know what I mean? So he was, he was trying to alert, alert the, the country basically to, to what's going on. Um, so this is this video and then, um, it does repeat itself at the end. Um, I'm just playing it in its entirety and that's how it was. Okay, so I'll just make it big screen and here we go. The fires in Australia are showing no sign of letting up and are said to be going to get worse. So far they've burnt down most of New South Wales, most of Victoria, huge fires in South Australia and they have murdered over one billion of our beautiful little animals. 30,000 koalas on Kangaroo Island alone. Folks, the boys are doing this and you're about to see how and why they're doing it. And you can go peacefully, but you better go quickly because we'll do it any way we can and we'll release the guns if we have to. But either way you look at it, Scott Morrison and you parasites in Canberra, the people are coming. You're fucked. The size and the scope and the range of the Australian fires continues. They're talking about evacuating a million and a half people now as they put in the agenda for their smart cities and to eliminate the people, but not just the people, folks. Look at this. They're going to kill over thousands of camels because of their flatulence because they drink too much water because allegedly Australia's in a drought, a climate change drought, which anything but which we're going to prove. But folks, if you can't get concerned about the loss of the people while the Australian Open is still going on and everything's fine, how about the animals that are being literally torched? This poor little animal tried to get through a fence that had become electrified due to the directed energy weapons and was fried. 
the animals and the loss of life is incredible and it's not just above the people but it's the weather manipulation that is beyond shadow of a doubt is occurring now watch these videos they're very popular now i want you to see these fires over here all the microwave activity happening in here popcorn flour all that right microwaves from the satellites I'm, I'm thinking i'm sure if i'm doing that wrong stuff will tell me here you go look at all those waves not good driving that weather away from the fires now you look here at this weather here radio waves right in here look at them look at those look at those waves driving that what that weather that rain and everything away from the fires okay now look over here more microwaves look at that look at that look at that look at all those waves okay not natural and look how it's driving that cloud away and some more popcorn cloud that's what they're calling okay now what i wanted to show you as well is over here in this system here now if you look at the loop it shows a rectangle at the eye okay they don't, they don't do rectangles okay look at this squares rectangles doesn't happen in nature okay it's round normally but i am watching to see what this area is going to do in the future I'm not too sure i'm sure other people that are a bit more experienced in this type of thing will know better than me but i'm trying i'm trying to show you what i'm observing on the satellite live from everything that you can see. And here's from the excellent work of Mike Morales, Weather Modification Advisory Committee, telling you they're modifying the weather, showing you, proving that the weather is being manipulated. The cold hard facts are that they could be putting out these fires at will with their many, many rain-making devices available to them, yet they're causing the drought, they're causing the water shortages, and they're torching and burning the people out and killing the wildlife. This is the Luciferian set the world on fire Jesuit agenda in action. You just get on to Mr. Kessler. Another question on, on the, uh, in an interview with the Los Angeles Times on April 21st, you said that the, you told the Associated Press uh, that the American government has created weather tampering techniques so that the New World Order will be able to starve millions of Americans and to control the rest. Would you explain what you were trying to say? Well, it, it, what I was trying to say is exactly what I said. There is weather control techniques. We have a complete package on that, which I did not bring, but I certainly will see to it that it is brought in for the record. Number one, the entire patents on the equipment. Number two, Senator Claiborne Pell's complete statement and story of his own that not only does it exist, but that we even utilize it as far back as the Vietnam War. You might want to touch base That's with right. Senator I, Pell. I, I just want to repeat before so, I turn it So yes, and, so but we do have all that information. You're saying the government has created weather tampering techniques so that the, quote, new world order will be able to starve millions of Americans. Worldwide. Millions of Americans and to control the rest. Yes, sir, and that's my belief. As bizarre as that sounds, when if somebody had told me that that equipment even existed 10 years ago, I would have thought they were nuts, sir. And at this point in time, we have all the documents to prove it. And if you think that 85 tornadoes takes place in the middle of our growing area by simultaneous accident, I'm, I'm sorry, with the equipment that's already set up internationally, and as bizarre as that is, it is proven and documented. We will supply you with those documents. As bizarre as that is, I would say that weather wars, and this is uh, quoting actually Senator Claiborne Pell himself, that they are the greatest weapon ever created in the world, and that's the Senator's own statement. So yes, I do stand on that. Thank you. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Weather weapons are the most dangerous weapons that they have, and they're using them in full force i was going to try to do a stream lap scene i may be it might, i may hit the wrong scene let me just see if this is it 
This may not be it, but we'll try it. And high winds continue to batter California today. Power was knocked out in parts of Riverside County in Southern California. All right, here we go. Uh, we've had a lot of cases where we were seeding storms that had no business being seeded. Uh, we were just kind of throwing darts, and we, we were seeing responses in some of those. So, so we are learning that maybe there's more opportunity with some of these. Maybe we don't even need to have a rain cloud. We could go work cumulative congested clouds that aren't really uh, precipitating it. And if it has inflow, maybe we could get something to work. Um, year one, we, we had the air tractor that the USDA uh, provided, so dosaging was a lot better. We were getting about 40 to 45 gallons per cloud. Uh, that aircraft wasn't available in year two, so we... Uh... So there you go. Yeah, the other clip I started to play was, you know, they're cloud seeding in California all the time. They have ground-based cloud seeders going all the time. So to say they need a certain type of cloud is a complete lie. And also, to say that they can't get the moisture in there is complete BS. This is all an engineered drought. They drought out every country before every war or before the takeover. They drought them out to cause the chaos with the food. And then, uh, you know, military comes in or however they want to do it. But it happens almost the same way every single time. And like I said, there's a company right here in Australia that can steer the atmospheric river. We're going to have to play that clip real quick, too. We can bring in the oceanic rain, and we need to be conscious it's not about delivering rain on land, it's about nurturing a rain system that can promote agriculture to protect the people involved. So in all cases, we want to make sure we don't get flooding, but we can deliver timely rain in a gentle soaking manner into agricultural targets. Technology relies on a signal that, we, that we're able to generate that um, triggers a response from atmospheric patterns. So we're able to observe this using satellite meteorology. Extensively available now to everyone who's got access to broadband internet. But we're able to um, utilize that signal set in sequence to generate a um, incremental deviation in the flow path of these oceanic atmospheric rivers. So the source is the ocean, of course. The vapor, um, precipitable moisture flow is in the atmosphere. The winds drive this with the pressure systems adjusting the path of least resistance. But our technology is able to interface that and hack into it, if you like, and make some micro adjustments to allow deviations to occur in the flow pathways. And this is how we broke the drought in Australia in 2005. This is how we put out the fires in Victoria from Black Saturday in 2009. This is how we delivered rain in the desert in Saudi Arabia in 2007 and snow for the first time in history in 2004 in the United Arab Emirates. There's been other projects above the radar and some under the radar, but today for the first time we're putting our hand up in front of the media to say this is available. We're going to run this project here to break the drought in the Horn of Africa. We're meeting with cabinet, uh, federal cabinet for Kenya and the Prime Minister and other parties and authorities in the region. We've met extensively with United Nations teams and agencies, and we're planning to do this in the most careful manner. Firstly, to bring some general rain in to give food for the crop, uh, food for the cattle and the livestock so milk can be produced, so the human survivability can go up. Once that survivability has gone up, then we can look at more substantial rains that can be suitable for crop. What is this technology? Uh, this technology. Uh, essentially, we're drawing oceanic rain systems that exist over the oceans into geographic targets, into our agricultural areas. Um, the technology uses electromagnetics, so we're not interfering with the atmosphere or with the environment. We're not damaging it. We're not using chemicals fired through rockets like other technologies use. We use a, a very um, gentle but powerful technology launching electromagnetics into the atmosphere 
to modify the flow of the weather system over the ocean and drawing it into a target. So, so if for any of you that still doubt the weather is being modified on a grand scale, on a regular basis, all over the world, just go to this website called weathermodification.com, Weather Modification Inc. We see potential. When most people look up, they see clouds. No, I see you geoengineering, spraying us like drugs and ruining the future for all life is what I see, you scumbags that are knowingly doing this. They're out of uh, North Dakota here. And if you tick on their clients and projects list, it's no small group that they're doing this through. Look at all the countries from A to Z where they have precipitation, meteorological spraying, geoengineered weather, that they're conducting and look at Cal look at the United States. Look at all the areas, Nevada, Edwards Face, North Dakota, Oklahoma, Santa Barbara, Sonoma Technology Inc. Huh, do you think you guys had a hand in the directed energy weapons attacks? Well, maybe we should go visit you and find out for ourselves. All of you that work for these companies and are staying silent and, and, and allowing this to happen, shame. Shame on you all. But here's the evidence, folks. You can't, you know, they use the weather to steer it with the next rad radar systems. They, they, they call it NOAA for a reason. You know, National Oceanic Administration, NOAA, get it, the floods, you know. They play games with us. And they have the radar systems. They have the aircraft. They have the hidden technology. Oh, built for success. No, built for aerosol spraying us like freaking bugs. And they also have VIP transports, photographic equipment. This is all being funded by the government that's acknowledging and helping and uh, providing for the money for uh, them to spray us like bugs and to manipulate the weather at will and to create the directed energy attacks. These are the companies that are involved with it all. And again, they've been modifying the weather for a very long time. This was a post from a lady who I, I used her information and I posted it. And she filed a copyright strike against me, calling me a parasite for trying to get the information out to share that the weather is being modified from her work. Don't understand it. Don't get it. Further, further proof is evident. Weather modifications have been going on for a very, very long time, and it's being intensified. Uh, uh, more from Intel said technology doubles every year. What do you think the weather modification abilities are when they can modify the weather with the technology, with the D-Wave computers, with the NEXRAD systems, with the wet surface air coolers, with the silver lining project. Yeah, it's a big, big business when they have weather derivatives markets. And this is the silver lining project. They park out in the oceans and they use the ocean water, as you heard him testify, using the ocean's water to create the water vapors and then use the barium in the, and the aluminum particles to steer the weather and create the rain if they want or the drought if they want. This is all part of the Bill Gates from hell funding to spray us like bugs to control the weather and manipulate at will for their agenda. Can you remain silent while all this is happening? Here's a piece I did on the Silver Lining Project with the former weather wars. Don't know what happened to him. But this explains it a little further about the Silver Lining Project and how it operates off the West Coast back in 2017. Three to five inches, guys, in a, such a short period of time, there is going to be more flooding and more, much more damage. As always, the simple and logical question is, how can this be? How can so much rain fall in such a short amount of time? Long-time Weather War 101 viewers already know the answer to that question, and it isn't an atmospheric river stretching from Hawaii. Meantime, out west, stretching all the way from Hawaii into the west coast, we've got this Pineapple Express. We are watching this round of powerful new storms making their way into California with even more heavy rains and high winds. Why are meteorologists okay with repeatedly saying this water vapor is streaming from the island of Hawaii with no natural explanation for why that would be? Why would the island of Hawaii be providing this water vapor instead of the whole of the Pacific Ocean? Here's one very tangible reason for why that would be. A massive geothermal power plant with huge banks of fans capable of blowing tremendous amounts of water vapor into the air. 
This plant is conveniently located precisely at the beginning of the so-called atmospheric river. The Hawaiian Puna geothermal plant is exactly like the Californian geothermal plants, like Casa Diablo, that fuel the water vapor mass when it reaches the coast. Why can't meteorologists see with their own eyes that the so-called atmospheric river abruptly originates from the island of Hawaii but is fueled by other equally inexplicable sudden streams of water vapor? Why can't meteorologists see that when this artificially created water vapor stream reaches the coast of California, bursts of water vapor erupt from all over the state to complete the storm system and create the otherwise inexplicable deluge California is currently experiencing? For years, Weather War 101 has explained why geoengineers have such difficulty getting it to rain in California. This system depends on sequential water vapor generation from one state to the next, adding to storm systems until saturation point is reached. California, being at the beginning of this nationwide cycle, has no states before it to bring storm systems to saturation. Since there are far fewer water vapor generators in the Pacific than there are on land, sufficient water vapor to tip saturation point rarely reaches California. However, Recent evident increases of the number of water vapor generators in the Pacific have produced enough water vapor concentration on several instances for the on-land water vapor generators to push them past saturation. This is the verifiable sequence of events that produces these rare rainstorms in California and it is the verifiable sequence of the current storm as well. Here we see streams of water vapor burst from nowhere as if from a fire hose. In fact, in the perpetual effort to numb the public to reality, fire hose is quite often exactly how they refer to it. Here we see more streams. Here we see even more streams. These streams are intended to combine and bring near saturation water vapor mass to California where it can be tipped to force rain. These streams are clearly not the result of slow evaporation from the sun. Clearly, this rapid water vapor generation comes from fixed sources in the Pacific Ocean. The most definitive way to show deliberate intent is to show the on-land water vapor generation streams that are intended to push the incoming water vapor past saturation point. Observing this, proves the coordination and deliberate intent to make it rain and once you understand the process you can witness it with any storm on the planet. Here we see streams of water vapor generation in advance of the incoming water vapor mass.
This process continues and repeats. Three to five inches, guys, in a, such a short period of time, there is going to be more flooding and more, much more damage. As always, the simple and logical question is, how can this be? How can so much rain fall in such a short amount of time? Long-time Weather War 101 viewers already know the answer to that question, and it isn't an atmospheric river stretching from Hawaii. Meantime, out west, stretching all the way from Hawaii into the west coast, we've got this Pineapple Express. We are watching this round of powerful new storms making their way into California with even more heavy rains and high winds. Why are meteorologists okay with repeatedly saying this water vapor is streaming from the island of Hawaii with no natural explanation for why that would be? Why would the island of Hawaii be providing this water vapor instead of the whole of the Pacific Ocean? Here's one very tangible reason for why that would be. A massive geothermal power plant with huge banks of fans capable of blowing tremendous amounts of water vapor into the air. This plant is conveniently located precisely at the beginning of the so-called atmospheric river. The Hawaiian Puna geothermal plant is exactly like the Californian geothermal plants, like Casa Diablo, that fuel the water vapor mass when it reaches the coast. Why can't meteorologists see with their own eyes that the so-called atmospheric river abruptly originates from the island of Hawaii, but is fueled by other equally inexplicable sudden streams of water vapor? Why can't meteorologists see that when this artificially created water vapor stream reaches the coast of California, bursts of water vapor erupt from all over the state to complete the storm system and create the otherwise inexplicable deluge California is currently experiencing? For years, Weather War 101 has explained why geoengineers have such difficulty getting it to rain in California. This system depends on sequential water vapor generation from one state to the next, adding to storm systems until saturation point is reached. California, being at the beginning of this nationwide cycle, has no states before it to bring storm systems to saturation. Since there are far fewer water vapor generators in the Pacific than there are on land, sufficient water vapor to tip saturation point rarely reaches California. However, Recent evident increases of the number of water vapor generators in the Pacific have produced enough water vapor concentration on several instances for the on-land water vapor generators to push them past saturation. This is the verifiable sequence of events that produces these rare rainstorms in California, and it is the verifiable sequence of the current storm as well. Here we see streams of water vapor burst from nowhere as if from a fire hose. In fact, in the perpetual effort to numb the public to reality, fire hose is quite often exactly how they refer to it. Here we see more streams. Here we see even more streams. These streams are intended to combine and bring near saturation water vapor mass to California where it can be tipped to force rain. 
these streams are clearly not the result of slow evaporation from the Sun. Clearly, this rapid water vapor generation comes from fixed sources in the Pacific Ocean. The most definitive way to show deliberate intent is to show the on-land water vapor generation streams that are intended to push the incoming water vapor past saturation point. Observing this proves the coordination and deliberate intent to make it rain and once you understand the process, you can witness it with any storm on the planet. Here we see streams of water vapor generation in advance of the incoming water vapor mass. This process continues and repeats. Once again, in 2017, this is the only way storm systems happen, and it's the reason that when it does rain, it comes down in deluge. While the social media bot networks misdirect and shift focus to Governor Jerry Brown failing to upgrade the emergency spillway, the real question people need to be asking is, where did all of this water suddenly come from after four years of severe drought? No rational person would blame the governor for not upgrading an emergency spillway during extreme drought unless they were aware of the capacity to create sudden overwhelming events like this. Upgrading an emergency spillway during extreme drought would be like demanding snow tires. Three to five inches, guys, in a, such a short period of time, there is going to be more flooding and more, much more damage. As always, the simple and logical question is, how can this be? How can so much rain fall in such a short amount of time? The people are coming. You're fucked. And Jamie, my brother, from A Plain Truth For You, Thank you for this information. I cannot thank you enough.